what we're going to do today is talk about the assessment process here at the Nank College. So this is a general introductory to the assessment portion of the Nank College. For those of you that have not already entered this institution for the first time, um, um, first of all, I'd like to start off with, you know, introducing myself. My name is Mario Spade. I'm a so, uh, faculty in the social behavioral department. Um, I teach American history and world civ there. Um, this is, I believe, my second year, going into my second year at, here at the college. Um, I, I plan to change them. I do you know, not doubt that I use Pedro de Itali, but it's changed. I think that's a change for the Adonai, that's not Adonai. So those of you that are uh, familiar with those clans, that's where I'm coming from. Um, any questions before I move on? No? Okay, so welcome to uh, the Fall 2016 Intercampus Day. Um, we'll go to the next slide. So historical concept of the assessment in higher education. Uh, basically, oh, we have goals that we have generated already when we established last semester, and it's still in the process today. Um, and we're trying to go into uh, incorporating this type of institutional assessment for the very first time, I believe, in this, uh, at this point. And we're looking at the curriculums, looking at the general goals that we established in our division, and then looking at the overall um, institutional-wide assessment process. So that's what we're looking at at this point in time. Um, I believe Carrie will talk about the overall history of the uh, higher ed. But assessment at the Net College, um, the method we use uh, for assessment. Um, at this point, we're looking at general scope institutional-wide assessment. So we have various different categories in that area we're looking for. For instance, we have traditional concepts of understanding skills that we would like to have our students acquire. And also, the idea of leadership, the idea of um, what will the students obtain here at this institution. So that's what we're looking for in this assessment process, institutional-wide. And then it's also broken down into your subcategories, like, for instance, your division department. How do you assess students in those levels of understanding, for instance, in your class, your syllabi? How is it organized in regards to meet our goal overall, institutional-wide, along with your own goals that you've established in your division or in your classroom? Can I go to the next slide? So that's what we're looking at. Um, so brief history of higher education assessment. Um, Carrie will go ahead and talk about that. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Carrie Sosie Jim. I am the director of academic assessment here at Dominion College. Uh, thank you for coming out today. I know it's really early, um, but like Carrie said, we want to use this opportunity before our regular uh, sessions to give uh, faculty who are new to the institutions, especially those who. Um, have really taught in higher education as instructors or transitioning from K-12 to higher education. Assessment is kind of conducted a little bit differently in higher ed versus K-12. So I wanted to take this time right now to kind of go over a brief history of where this idea of academic assessment really came from. Um, uh, higher education is centuries old. The very first universities here in the United States really began in the 1600s, but it's not really until the 1980s when this idea of assessing student learning really popped up <coughs> onto the landscape. And the reason why is because multiple federal reports are published during this time, um, indicating the amount, there was a huge increase in the cost, tuition, fees, of getting a, a post-secondary education. And because the government was spending so much money at the time, funding institutions, whether they're two-year community colleges or four-year research universities, they needed to find some type of accountability. All this financial investment that's being put into colleges and universities, basically it's saying, we need to know what we're getting for our money. Um, we're spending taxpayer money and we need to know what we're getting. So the best way to kind of make sure that students are gaining some knowledge or skills in higher ed was that regional accrediting agencies began requiring the assessment of learning outcomes in order to maintain accreditation status. Now, for Danette College, our accrediting agency is the Higher Learning Commission. The Higher Learning Commission is really an independent corporation that began uh, in 1895, and it's really one of six really large regional institutional accreditors in the U.S. 
It's a degree granting post-secondary educational institution for the North Central region, which actually encompasses about 19 states. So Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, kind of really the Midwest all the way to all the way to Illinois is what the HLC is. So I'm providing a link for you, and we'll email this to you uh, after today. But uh, feel free to take a look at the HLC Commission's website. More specifically, uh, the reason why we kind of wanted to get everyone on board with this idea of assessment and getting really comfortable with accreditation is because in about two, three years, the Higher Learning Commission will be visiting Diné College with a site team to really kind of review all the various aspects of our college. And three of the major components that are required for our accreditation are really tied to assessment. Component three, teaching and learning, the quality and resources and support that the Net College provides both to its faculty, staff, and students. Component four, teaching and learning, evaluation and improvement. What this area really touches on is how do we ensure that students are learning not only in individual classrooms, in individual courses, but entire programs themselves, and even collectively as an entire institution. What are students leaving the Net College with certain skills, knowledge, content, and abilities? And we have to be able to demonstrate that we take those results of knowing what our students are learning and we improve curriculums, degree programs, instruction, instructional delivery across the board. So we have to demonstrate we're making these connections all the way around. Component five, resources, planning, and institutional effectiveness. Now this is where we do all of this assessments. We analyze all of our results. We make changes to our instruction and curriculum. But we also have to tie our long-term fiscal planning to all the changes that we're making. So we have to be able to demonstrate all of these things in three of the five major components. So the, basically what we're going here is uh, we have an institutional-wide um, assessment process, like I mentioned earlier before, mm -hmm. um, which will look at what we want the students to gain, the knowledge they want to gain as they leave the net college. So that's basically what we're looking at here. And to break it down, we have a co-curricular activity which is separate compared to what we're looking at within the discipline and overall the general study courses. We also have a general education annual assessment that takes place, which is pretty much your mechanics day, and then at the end you come together and you talk about the general courses that were assessed. And that is different compared to your degree programs. Um, your degree programs are basically academic programs with few courses, which are at least, I would, I would generate in that, um, in levels of, like for instance, 200 level courses, or even um, specific courses that meet a certain degree program that you're looking forward into. Um, so those are pretty much, like for instance, um, as an example, History 245, which focuses on American history and Western, Western um, United States. So that would be a particular degree program course. Um, the general assessment would be anything like, for instance, your 100 level courses, which are your English, right, your um, general history courses, along with um, you know, your sciences. Um, and then you have course level as well. Um, you, the faculty go in and assess these course level courses, like for instance, your own particular course that you're teaching. So you can provide the general documentation of what you're looking for as an instructor or a professor and um, what you're planning on assessing and, and um, testing the students on. And so when you get together, you talk about these areas and then you organize your own outcome of that. Anything, and then you can compare it with your own faculty, your, your, your colleagues, or whatever. Um, any questions? And it's broken up like this in, in order for us to actually look at from degree courses kind of thing, um, your, your, own, your own area of interest, and then put it, we're, we're lining it up to the institutional section. It's, uh, yeah, so it's broken up in this sense. Um, we have general education, we have degree programs, and course level. Um, and at the end of the semester, we actually have to be assess all those areas. As faculty um, <coughs> who work within your divisions, the highlighted questions are really the divisional responsibilities. So the divisions are responsible for assessing their general education uh, programs, courses, if they decide to do them individually or collectively for all the outcomes that are outlined in our general education 
for the outcome section, which is actually provided on the portal, if anyone is interested. Uh, degree programs, there are two components for assessing degree programs here on campus. One of them is academic program review. Now, program review is really something that takes place every four to five years specific to degree programs. So those, you will not be doing annually as faculty. However, I do see some faculty who are in divisions who are conducting program review. So just to kind of highlight, program review is different from what we do annually with assessment. Um, course level, course level is really what you're assessing within the classroom. And you as faculty, what you want to be asking you is really collect the artifacts from the classrooms that you teach, from the courses over two terms. Um, this can vary from anything from student writing samples to pre and post-test post -test results, um, observations. So, um, but what we wanted to do is get you familiar that these are the three major areas that faculty need to be cognizant of moving forward. Co-curricular. Co-curricular to kind of... Oh, sorry. I was going to ask, maybe you'll, maybe you'll cover this down the road, but um, about any like uh, commonly common practices or best practices that you see, uh, maybe just common practices in the institution for uh, the number of courses um, and what types of courses are assessed for course level uh, versus um, the degree programs and, and what what is actually assessed for those. Okay. All right. Well, we can go into that a little bit later. Um, but to kind of just a little bit clarify what co-curricular assessment is, co-curricular is really tied to the student affairs portion of our institution. Co-curricular refers to those services, programs, events that really support the students in the academic realm. So if this can have anything to do with the tutoring, math tutoring, science, biology tutoring, Navajo language tutoring, um, any type of learning center that the institution might provide, those are all tied to co-curricular assessments. Um, so this is one thing that is kind of fairly new to the Higher Learning Commission um, because so much money is invested into student support services <coughs> for colleges across the country. We also need to be able to assess that we're actually helping these students academically. Now institutional, institutional is really what we're going to be working on um, from now on. We started this work back in January and I'm not sure if some of you were able to attend intercampus this past spring, but we introduced this idea of what type of student does the Nip College want to graduate, regardless of the degree program, regardless of what classes they're taking. After two years and completing a two-year degree, what do we hope to produce collectively as a Nip College graduate? So this ties into institutionally, what do we want our students to leave with? So associate here at Nip College more recently has really broken into two parts. Um, there's two major bodies here at Penn College that deal and work directly with academic assessment. One of them being the SLAC committee. And I'll have Marius, since he's a representative for SLAC, talk a little bit more in depth about what they do. So SLAC, in, in, in regards to your assessment, um, each individual, for instance, you have eight members from each division um, coming into SLAC representing their division. <coughs> My situation is I'm, I'm, I'm taking care of the social behavior department. So any type of information regarding assessing courses and division level information, right? I obtain all those all those notes and bring them to SLAP members. And then we talk about these areas in, in regards to how we plan on assessing. Um, in regards to that, we provide, I provide rubrics and for, for our division and also we share that with Slack. So it's pretty much a liaison that I'm actually conducting there between the, the institutional or the division and Slack overall. Um, and what we do is we go through and um, I, I closely conversate with our, our chair um, because overall Slack members um, from a division cannot do assessment entirely. You know, we need assistance through the chair. And usually the chair and the SLAC member are in collaboration in how we plan on assessing, how we plan on attacking this idea of student learning, student understanding, um, knowledge, tradition, and then we try to tie it in into the overall institutional goal of what we want to see our students come out with within our division. So that's what we're looking at, and that's how my role is linked into this whole process here. Um, again, if you want to check it out, go to our Slack website. It's still in the process of getting modified, but it's there. You're more than welcome to check it out. I'm looking to it. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm sure some of you have already heard 
various different rhetoric on Slack already. So those that are coming in for the first time into this institution, um, you'll, you'll hear more often from here on out, I guarantee you. Um, any questions? Slack stands for Student Learning Assessment. Student Learning, Asse um, student learning Assessment Knowledge, right? No, achievement. 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 Yeah. Achievement. yeah. Yeah, I'm not good with uh, learning achievement acronyms. Student learning achievement. No. Yeah. Student learning has here achievement. Yeah. So in terms of uh, the Office of Academic Assessment, my role on campus is really to make sure that assessment is taking place on campus for all of the multiple levels, all the way from course level, individual courses themselves, all the way up to institutional that encompasses everything, even co-curricular assessments, dealing with student affairs. So it's a very large pie that I have to deal with. Um, basically, you know, more in depth, I try to help uh, streamline and ease the process in the collection of artifacts um, for both your courses and your programs across the board. And I have to ensure that those artifacts are preserved in some way or form for our accreditation. Um, I also have to ensure that we continue to document the process of those assessments that take place here on campus. So if any division meetings take place, if there's any minutes where you specifically talk about academic assessment of student learning, please feel free to forward those to me because that really is great for demonstrating our processes of our learning permission. I also help facilitate the work on the Slack. Um, the Slack is really your divisional representative when it comes to an assessment. So when we have these larger questions to answer, for example, our institutional outcomes for our students, you must inherently trust your Slack rep to represent your division and to say, we, our division thinks that our students need to be the NEM college with, example, critical thinking skills, quantitative reasoning abilities, that kind of thing. Um, I also uh, work closely with our accreditation. I have to ensure that when the HLC comes to visit in 2018 or 19, that all our docs are in the world and that we can demonstrate we have good processes here on campus. And so I know it's not on the side, but what I don't do as a director of academic assessment is tell you what to assess. I don't direct divisions or faculty or um, division chairs what the student learning outcomes is for their individual courses or for their degree programs. Um, I don't have the expertise or the knowledge or a PhD to be able to dictate what a student should leave with a degree in biology, a degree in business administration, um, a degree in math. So we're, we're, I have to trust you to come up with those outcomes and assessment measures yourself. Okay, so if there's any talk about, you know, the director's telling us to assess this, no, I'm just telling you to assess. You need to make sure that you're continuously assessing throughout the year. Okay, so we're going to kind of touch into now um, really what assessment in higher education is. And there's a lot of confusion, especially when we get faculty who are coming from K through 12, because in K through 12 there is a lot of talk of assessment, <coughs> state testing, state measures, that kind of thing. And we want to start this presentation off with the note that assessment in higher ed is not the same as it is in K through 12. Okay, um, same along the lines of teaching. Um, for those of you who are faculty, perhaps coming from K through 12, you arrive at a school and your lesson plans are given to you. The textbook is given to you. This is what you're supposed to teach. And therefore, you know, the state assessments, all you do is property the assessments. Higher ed is not the same. Um, as faculty in higher ed, you are trying to kind of your ownership of your classroom, how you're going to instruct, what you're going to instruct, what you're going to test on, the same way with assessments. Okay, so you have to work collectively with your division on how you're going to assess all the different areas that need to be assessed annually. Um, so what Carrie was mentioning earlier was faculty had their own uh, method of assessing. Um, what, in, what that entails is actually creating a rubric for your own course. Um, for instance, I'm, I'm going to a course right now which I'm assessing History 101, um, which previously we had to assess every semester, right? This semester we selected various different courses that we would like to assess, so we kind of broke it all out throughout a, a whole academic year. Um, so this semester I'm, I'm assessing History 101, and so I created a rubric 
like to, um, and one of my, my focus in my group is to kind of uh, focus on whether or not students are obtaining lifelong learning um, and how do I assess that. So I, I use methodologies in my courses to meet that expectation. For instance, there's a methodology that I like to apply in each history course that I teach um, and it's titled SART, Survival Adaptation Resistance Persistence. And so when students are hitting that and applying it to the actual curriculum, along with trying to incorporate critical thinking in regards to how does it affect them as an individual in that particular course. And once I see that, I, I recognize it. I have like a little um, chart that I have, right? And so I, I um, give the student a certain amount of points in that rubric. And so that's what I'm assessing. That's my, the critical portion of it that I'm, I'm looking at. So that's what I'm looking at. So overall, what have students actually learned at the completion of the course? And again, that's my overall goal in my particular class. Now, each one of you, as a, as a faculty, is going to have a different perspective, a different goal you all want to get. And so you look at the course, what is the title of it? How do you pursue that um, particular goal that the students want to hit? Right? You create a degree program, you look at their background, and whether or not it's undergraduate, um, you know, the general study course, depending on how you want to access that. So that's basically just an example of how I do my assessment in my particular class. But overall, this is what I'm looking at, the assess assessment of student learning from my particular course, and then I'm going to share that with you on the overall division department. So in essence, um, assessment has to take place comprehensively across campus. Um, academics does not exist alone when it comes to assessment. Student affairs must also chime in. Um, so we can kind of show here how you know we can assess that even if the courses don't have a student learn at the completion of a course, at the completion of a degree program, or comprehensively at the completion of their undergraduate education here at Denair College. Um, so here are the major areas that we definitely have here at Denair College. Now I know that there are some good practices in the past on assessing individual courses, individual students within individual courses. We've had some issues trying to be able to effectively assess degree programs themselves, um, collecting and assessing artifacts that are kind of really uh, a good bird's eye view of the degree programs. And we're trying to inform faculty about best ways on how to assess in those ways. Um, general education um, is also assessed annually, and I'm sure Marius can touch on that a little bit more. Co-curricular is also something very new to uh, Dinette College, but that is more of a student affairs initiative. Institutionally, we are starting to push forward with some, several initiatives where we finally establish and outline our own institutional outcomes, and you are going to have an opportunity today to chime in and say what those outcomes should be. So you as faculty have to decide what that has to be today so we can gather all this information and actually make some decisions moving forward. Um. Yeah, so this is basically what I was talking about earlier, this idea of assessing, assessing individual courses. My objective in my class is basically to make sure students are understanding um, general educational critical thinking. Um, and, and what kind of methods am I going to use, right? It's going to learn how it comes overall. I have a rubric that's going to tie into that process. Uh, methods of assessment. I have my own method, and that type of method is working for me overall. So I'm looking at assessing exactly how these students are picking up the material and how they're applying it to their lifelong journey, if anything. And then also applying critical thinking outside the box of the actual course. Like, for instance, issues in uh, American society, the state of Native America today, how does it affect it? How has it changed over time, right? How does it affect the individual? So that's what I'm looking at in my course. And at the end, we come together uh, and we organize our outcomes of, and then we can share it amongst our own faculty members, our own colleagues, and then we apply that into Slack. We we'll let them know this is what we were assessing. This is the whole process of how we went about it, and this is our outcome and results. This is pretty much how we analyze it. <coughs> so objective, describe the goals and intentions of the faculty who teach the course or program. Um, so again, you know, we're going back into the instructor or the professor. What their main objective is to get out of the students in that particular class. Um, here we reflect the knowledge, skills, or attitudes that students will develop during the time they are attending the course. Um, so we're looking at how they're picking up the material, how they are applying it. Also, 
how they understand it from their point of view, right? Their own perspective of the material. And in my class, I always tell my students, you know, well, history is biased, <laughs> no matter where it's coming from, is biased. But how do you inc incorporate that information? How is it your history, right? How do you apply it to your own status overall? And so that's what I look at in my class. So be specific and detailed, assessing and reporting on each objective for each student may be impossible. And of course, this is a hard, it's a pretty intense stuff, you know, to assess knowledge of a student. My, my objective is basically trying to hit a point of where they're understanding the material. And so that's going to change throughout time. It's going to, it's, it's in a process of <coughs> being modified at this point, right? But I'm looking at the fact that I want to hit this objective. These are my goals that I want to make sure I want to try to get to. And we'll see what happens. And it's, it's really never a concrete um, process. I mean, there's always going to be modifications in, 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 object, in your objectives or what you want to see this or learn. Um, so the outcome overall, we have evidence that objectives were achieved. And again, my chart is, you know, a level from one through five, and students hitting a five percent or you know five overall um, are pretty much excelling in where I want the students to learn. Um, learning outcomes are statements that describe the list measurable and essential mastery content or knowledge reflecting skills. Um, and so last semester, when I first entered this institution, we had a process where we looked at a multiculturalism. In the student, what if they're recognizing multiculturalism, and also whether or not they're hitting a certain area in, in regards to um, what was that? Uh, critical thinking was one of the major areas that we were trying to institute in our courses. And so, as long as we're hitting those, we're actually documenting each course like that. So, our objective is basically organizing the outcome of the whole process of the course and making sure that it's reflecting on the student and overall on the instructor as well. So you're looking at the syllabi. Your syllabi is going to be your basic goal projective kind of thing that you're going to try to assess and do that as well. So methods of assessment, how do you evaluate the student show the proficiency in the outcome? Again, you know, it really comes down to the instructor's point of view. Where they want to assess, how they want to assess that. Their main goal and objective overall is going to be continuously changing. So, as long as you have a set goal at the very beginning and a rubric to go follow through with that, you can actually try to hit that proficiency, right? So, because there's not enough time in the day to really talk on all the best practices when it comes to assessing either individual courses or the group programs in themselves, we went ahead and made some several copies on best practices provided by the American uh, Association, Association of Colleges and Universities really the overarching organization for the entire country. So it, ha it handles everything, in anything from assessing individuals um, in individual courses, individuals across courses, entire degree program, to institutional life. So uh, in the uh, interest of time, we're going to hand these out to you, take them with you. It's not a very long read. Um, and please feel free to visit the HLC website so you can get, get, get a sense of when it comes to assessment, what we really need to show in black and white when we have our accreditation. Um, so, and I don't know if uh, anybody wants to kind of chime in and talk about, you know, any confusion they're meeting um, in their divisions so far. Um, as new faculty, hearing the, the words um, assessment and hearing all this jargon related to assessment, one can get lost. And so that's why we wanted to create this opportunity today. So when you meet with your divisions this afternoon, you can kind of have some familiarity with what's talked about in those meetings and contribute to the conversation. Or any questions? Is that all? Okay. Um, so point that comes up different times I've heard faculty from different divisions and definitely within our division uh, talk about program level assessment and that, that distinction between the two course level and program just seems to be a challenge sometimes and uh, the, the idea of program level um, you look at all of the courses in our program and uh, some folks have, have made the assertion and they have, they have stuck to that that we need to evaluate every single course that's on the list of a program um, to, to do appropriate program level um, assessment. Whereas what I just heard Mario say was that they've chosen in SBS, right, to, um, to assess certain courses for the program level assessment this time. And that being they're tying it to your program level goals, right, or, or outcomes, however you want to phrase it. 
and then you're, you're basically only choosing a certain number of those and then maybe next semester or next year you'll, you'll shift to another set because it's what I've seen and, and, and often is from the other side is that it's too much, it's unmanageable to try and assess every single course in your program. Is that, am I right in that or is that, can you correct me if you talk about that? It, it is. Um, the way that SBS is doing it, they try to figure out a more efficient, time saving, less overwhelming amount of work to do way of doing the degree program assessment. What they've done is they've identified the capstone course. Mm -hmm. So the capstone course is building on all these courses that lead up to this one where you're supposed to demonstrate efficiency <laughs> to the certain knowledge or skills, correct? Mm -hmm. um, some divisions have done that. It's entirely up to the division if they decide if it's necessary to assess every individual course in the degree program. But then you know you tier on just you know you're assessing just courses themselves. Um, with degree, you know, it's, it's a little bit tough for some faculty to understand that assessing a degree program is really looking at the bird's eye view of the student in that program. And for, for example, um, and I'm strong myself, I, uh, I went for uh, EMS certification in Arlington. Um, I had to take so many courses, pharmacology, anatomy, physiology, um, first aid, that kind of thing, all the way through to the program. But I had to enter one last class where I had to finally demonstrate, you know, appropriate prescription levels, you know, calculating um, different things, uh, assessing a scene, assessing a patient, all the acronyms that tie with it. So having to do this one class has built upon all these other classes that were within the program. So the director of the EMS program didn't have to assess my proficiency in every single class I ever took because this one internship, this capstone course, built on all those items. So if there's something that I couldn't quite understand, then you know, that identified to her that there was a gap somewhere. That perhaps the program needed a little bit more math, you know, reinforcement, that kind of thing. That's kind of what program level assessment should really be, but it's entirely up to the divisions if they, if they decide to assess every single course in the degree program. Yeah. But you don't have to. You don't it's have not, to. It's I not like that's the standard that everybody No, 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 that certainly is not the standard. Um, and so basically in closing, which is great because what we want you to walk away with is that there's no one right way to assess. Okay, assessment in higher ed is really, a lot of it's creative process. Um, especially when you get to these big items such as critical thinking. How do you have you assess critical thinking skills? How is that demonstrated? You know, it's that idea of you know it when you see it, but then how do you assess it, right? Um, not everyone, and in this case, not every division is going to have the same objectives or outcomes. Therefore, not all, all assessments are going to be the same. It's not a one-size-fits-all. It should never be that way. So, um, you know, that's why we come to intercampus days, so we can create these dialogues and say, what is Bassett doing? What is math doing? What is uh, CBTE doing? Um, and in all, assessments are really, the results of assessments are really intended to make improvements to instructional methods, curriculum, programs as a whole, and really the instructional delivery. Um, and I only say this because most recently, um, one of our nearby institutions, Samuel College, is making a transition, moving away from a lot of online delivery because a lot of their students are not performing well in online courses. So, you know, things like that, and no one would know, it, know it until we actually assess what the students are learning. Um, so they're trying to figure out new ways for students to be successful um, by switching out the delivery, so much making it a hybrid, a hybrid program, some of it online, some of it you have to be here on campus, that kind of thing. That's what assessment allows us to do here at the institution. Um, so we provide some resources, and like I said, we can email this all to you um, at the end of today. And I think Mary has passed out the, uh, well, Mary is going to pass out the handout that I mentioned earlier, which really identifies all the areas of assessment. Um, as it's kind of represented by the Association of American College and So, um, we only have about five minutes before we have to join the General Assembly. So, feel free to email me or Mary if you have any more questions. And I hope you guys have a good day. Thank you. Is that a wrap? <laughs>
Wait, let me catch that. Go ahead again. Are you serious? Go on. There you go. If I had 